Thank you very much, uh, Stefano, Michel Doc. It's a great pleasure to be here with you again and share with you some new information. And also, I would like to extend the congratulations to the organization of this great meeting. Yes, muscle tendon and FMAR strategy. Do not expect from neurologists that I give you some insight on the muscle and tendon. I could give you more about the nerve connections, but I will talk about something different. Well, our vision in prevention, and you have heard it several times, the fair play, loss of the game, the chairman of the medical committee of the FIFA and UEFA, Michel, has mentioned that very clearly. The preparation for the game, the management of injuries, this is something you will be discussing a lot, but for us it's important, the prevention by education and regular exercise. The future of medicine, and there is no doubt about this, is not the diagnostic and treatments, it's the recognizing of pre-symptomatic stage. And this is where we are going in the future. All the scientists, whether you are speaking with people from MIT or from the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology, they see that that way. And I, this is which leads me to the next step, is the decoding of individual genotype. Alan said, well, why is my knee deteriorating much faster than the knee of my colleagues? Maybe there is a different individual variation in the genotypes, and this is also the future of the research. Now let's start with a very simple one, the fair play. You know that we are very carefully looking at all FIFA competitions. We try to impact the refereeing style, and we have some achievements, and I think we, Michel and myself, we are proud about that, that the International Football Association board is listening. And we can show, I just give the example of the Men's World Cup, that we have the tendency to decrease injuries in um, men's top competition. And on the other side, there is an increasing rate of injuries for female footballers. And it's not only at the World Cup, the same trend we have at the Olympic Games, even more prone. So when we started, we had 3.7 injuries per match. At the last Olympics in London here, that was beautiful, only 1.3 injuries per match. But the ladies, they are picking up. So what are the possible reasons? We really do not know. One of them could be the style of the game. And one of them, it's just a simple statistic, in the male competition they are much, many more given yellow cards, so there is a stricter application of the rules. But for female, the game is becoming faster and physical, but the referees are a little bit behind. So it's a, just a simple message which we translate into the language of the referees and ask them to take the action. And also we see on this very simple statistics, the dark blue, are the contact injuries, including fouls. And you see that in the men competition, in the World Cup, this is decreasing. The non-contacts are staying about the same. And in the female competition, the contact injuries are increasing. Simple message, which can be also passed over to those who are responsible for that type of issue. Now, this is just, and you will hear much more from Jan Ekstrand, just to put in the highlighted bold the ligamentous muscles and tendon injuries. They are basically the majority of all football injuries. So the subject picked up for this year, isokinetic conference, is the ap absolutely appropriate. So when we take the contact and non-contact injuries, and this is a, again, strong appeal to you, 
as club doctors in 87 countries around the world and many, many clubs, how the people are reacting. And we are a little bit alarmed to the fact that the abuse of medication may be thinking to prevent injuries or to treat the injuries is just still the same. We have not impacted, even the first papers were published about four or five years ago, even in the last competition, it's about the same. Even under 17, the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs are overused by the football players. And I think these results are alarming. We have to do more about that. We have to see that there should be other therapeutic approaches than just simply prescribing um, pain killers. And it is, uh, look at this, 75% of youth players are using non-steroidal per seasons. And 15% of the youth players are using them daily. There is definitely no indication. That's from our side an abuse. So is it a prophylactic or is it a systematic use? We have to ask the questions. Uh, this is just to document the market somewhere in the Far East with distributing the different medications. So our strategy, the main, what we think, the pre-symptomatic situation to influence is by the preventive programs. I will be very brief with the 11 plus, the first publications 2008 from the Oslo group with Roald Barr and his team, followed by other, just showing that the incidence of injuries by regularly applying a preventive program for recreational, semi-professional, and maybe even for professional players will lead to significant reduction of injuries during training and also during the competition matches by, by one-third and for severe injuries even by one-half. There is a new study, and I just touch it, Holy Silver and Bart Mandelbaum will elaborate during those days much more on it, which was done on male population in the United States, being led by the FIFA Medical Center of Excellence in Santa Monica. And they took the similar setup like the Oslo group and control and the uh, intervention group, and this intervention was the regular application of the 11 plus. And after one season in the intervention group, about 800 players, and in the control group, almost 1,000 players. The dark blue are the total amount of injuries in the control group, about three times as many as in the intervention group. That's a strong message, which direction, and we are very happy that another controlled prospective study confirmed the results on the female population, now also on male. And if you take some of the aspects we are discussing today, hamstring injuries, 68 in control, 8 in intervention, adductor injuries, 41 versus 13. So there is, there is an impact, and those are those injuries which are the classical overused. So in summary, the FIFA 11 Plus successfully decreased the injuries in football players participating even at the high level of football in the United States that were collegial players at the Division I and II. The group is finalizing the statistical analysis, but I wanted to share with you this encouraging results. So our duty is to promote something which is valid. This is the translational medicine. We have to go from science into the implementation. And as Michel said, FIFA is supporting that. To get such a banners at the World Cup, and we will have the same space during the World Cup 2014, it's not without um, the impact of the medicine on the decision-making people. But we are using also the medical conferences, such as this one, with, um, with the isokinetics, and we are very happy that the FMARC logo is jointly with the isokinetics. And we used uh, the Bologna to promote. We used also the Chelsea meeting to promote. And recently, we used to promote the Brucke meeting, the Brucke sport in Belgium a few weeks ago. So this is definitely the way to go. 
Now, a number of big member associations, and the biggest one, Germany, has agreed to implement the program nationwide in the 26,000 registered football clubs in Germany. The same in Spain, the same in Italy, the same in Japan, and now even more impressive, the same in Brazil. The CBF is now working on the implementation of the program in the entire country, in all clubs in which is licensed with the CBF. So when Stefano says the participation on the world chart of the people here in the audience, this is where we already implemented or exported the 11 plus. You see that it is very similar. So those who are here from the white spots on the chart, please approach me. We are more than happy to give you all the support because all the materials are free. This is our service to the football. Anything we create, and Roald Bar can uh, confirm that when we started to pre prepare all this material, there was an agreement. All doctors involved, we will not claim any royalties on this, what we will produce. This is service from our profession to the football, and we are happy and thankful to FIFA that we can use their network and their logistic to promote this, what we have found in the science. So thank you, Stefano. 11, the synonym for prevention in football. I am also proud that you are using the appropriate ball to play with. And I think we will continue with that. So the future research, and I will touch that very briefly. I still have four minutes from my allocated 15 minutes. I will not talk about the PRP. There are a number of speakers who are touching this issue, but I think it is worthy to follow. But I will touch something which really excites me. And it, uh, I got a little bit involved in that, and it's the Molecular Health Science Platform. Medic when medicine and technology gets together, we might get more information. We might learn from the scientists what is happening. And we are very proud that FMAR got affiliated with the Swiss Institute of Technology, which is the number 11, by chance, number 11 academical in institution in the world, in Europe number three after Cambridge and Oxford. And they have now opened, three weeks ago, a new institute, the Molecular Health Science Platform. And we have two professorships in this, um, in this institution. One is the pure FIFA, and one is the FIFA Medical Center of Excellence in Zurich. One is dealing with the cartilage engineering, and one is dealing with the problems which Alan has, that's the orthopedic of aging, whether it was induced by physical activity or whether there are other aspects. Each person is biologically unique, and the science can today determine the genetical information, the genetic variability, the genome. Once we have that, and this is all those, um, all those letters which you see there, they are thousands and hundreds of thousands, but the scientists are able to identify them, and they can identify the individual variability. And then they put it into the perspective of the cells. They can identify the normal cells, and they can identify the altered cells, which alter under the influence on, of the environment. And under environment, you don't only uh, see the air, but environment is also the way of life. Physical activity, nutrition, anything. That has impact on your genome. So you can alter the genetic information, the genome, in one direction, but you can also alter the genetic information into the other direction. In order to do that, the institute has built a building which cost 150 million, the building, but the inside of the building was another 200 million, and this is a living quarter for 40,000 mice. And those are a special mice, uh, genetically prepared, very valuable, and they are living like in five-star hotel comfort. They are absolutely controlled. Anything they do, 
they eat, how they reproduce. And the scientists are now working on this model of genotypes identification. So if you, for example, consider we should alter the variation of the cells by environment, for example, in the cartilage or in the muscle or in the tendon, then you can prepare a theoretical model which you will put into the in vivo operation with the genetically predisposed mice. I was visiting this institute, it's quite impressive. If you see 40,000 mice, which are absolutely under control in the reproduction, then you can actually use this model. Whether you use it for a cartilage or muscles, or you use it for a car, for a heart or, or vessels, this is the model. And it's obviously a huge investment to identify the genotypes. So think about this, those who are working on those issues, you can approach us and we can approach the scientists to discuss and maybe even get the step forward. This is what we are interested in because the scientists, they just perform this, what they are asked by the clinicians. So I think this is also one aspect, the precondition, the prevention, the loss of the game, but also for the future we have to think how we combine the technology with this, what we are doing in daily life. And I think the idea of creating as a network of the worldwide communication of the FIFA Medical Center of Excellence is a great approach because we get together, we can communicate, we can formulate the research questions and put them in operation. And there is a huge power in the international collaboration when we want to have and research question to be answered and have the multinational or intercontinental differences. Currently we have 33 around the world and we hope that also here we can make a chart which will cover the entire globe where football is played. I finished, you have heard the philosopher of the FIFA, Michel Doc, when he spoke about Alcius, Sitius and Fortius. And he also gave me this idea. He was reading when he was uh, studying his philosophical books and he told me, you know what? It was already 2000 years ago in Rome when Galen, you know Galen, the father of modern medicine has mentioned somewhere in his books, ball games are good for the health. So it's nothing new. And I am not agree with Alan that he says football is not good for you we have to uh, change that attitude. So with this, I thank you very much uh, for your attention and let's speak about football for health. Thank you very much. Thank you.